Hi everyone! In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of selling inventory in a perpetual inventory system. Now, when we talk about selling inventory in a perpetual system, the underlying concept that we have to deal with is the cost of that inventory that we are selling, something known as cost of goods sold. Now, to, to, to get you to cost of goods sold, let's first talk a minute about what it looks like when we first buy inventory. When you buy inventory, whether you pay with cash or you pay on account, you debit inventory for the amount that you're buying. In other words, you capitalize the cost to inventory. You don't recognize any sort of expense when you buy the inventory. You give up an asset, cash, you receive an asset, inventory arguably of equal value. However, when you sell the inventory, which is the point at which you are going to earn revenue as part of that sale, right? Whatever you charge your customer, that capitalized cost, whatever you originally paid for that inventory, has to get expensed at that time. The reason being, when you first buy the inventory, you're exchanging one asset for another. When you sell the inventory, you're literally getting rid of it at that point. You add an asset and that asset is going away. And so you have to recognize the expense of that asset going away. That is a cost specifically known as cost of goods sold or often abbreviated COGS, C-O-G-S. In a perpetual system, COGS will always be recorded at the time of the sales transaction. So let's take a look at how this actually plays out. Here I give you an example. Walmart sells $2,400 worth of green giant canned goods to customers on account for a price of $3,600. Let's break down these words for a minute. Typically when you see a dollar amount worth of goods, what that means is worth to the party it relates to. So in this case, those goods are worth $2,400 to Walmart. Another way to think about that is that is what Walmart originally paid for the goods. That is the capitalized cost of the goods. Down here, you see price of $3,600. Whenever you see a selling price, $3,600, that's what you're charging the customer. And of course, whatever you charge the customer is also essentially the revenue you're earning off of the sale. Now, in this case, it tells us on account, so there's not going to be any cash on this transaction. Rather, it's going to go to an account, but that's an easy thing to deal with in the time. So let's, let's take a look at this journal entry then. Let's assemble it. First up, you are charging Green Giant 3600 on account. So debit accounts receivable, 3600 Credit, sales revenue, 3600 Why accounts receivable? Well, because we know it's on account. Had they paid in cash, it would have been just as simple as debiting cash, but that's not what happened here. Why sales revenue? Well, you have sold a product. This is the price you earned from selling that product. That's what you charge the customer. This right here is what I like to call the revenue portion, revenue portion of an inventory sales transaction. This is not all that is happening at this time. This just covers what happened from a revenue standpoint. Charged customer, earned revenue. In this case, they'll pay you later, a receivable. There's also an expense portion though, because the reason that the customer is giving you money is because you are giving them $2,400 worth of your inventory. And so we're going to have to have another piece of this journal entry where we reduce inventory. Remember, inventory is an asset. Asset down is a credit, so credit inventory 2400 The other side of this, the debit that we need, well, that's the cost of your inventory going away, the cost of selling the good or cost of goods sold, COGS. This is what I'm going to call the expense portion of our inventory sale journal entry. So one half captures what you charge customers, what they owe you. The other half captures the inventory leaving and the cost associated with that inventory. Now, the reason it's set up this way really comes down to these two pieces right here, sales revenue and COGS. Sales revenue isn't a revenue that's on your income statement. Cost of goods sold is an expense also on your income statement. The difference between that revenue and that expense is going to establish the profit of the business, or specifically when it comes to inventory, something we call the gross profit, the profit you're making off of the goods that you're selling before all other expenses of the business. Note down here, I tell you that inventory sales under a perpetual system will always involve a double journal entry. So if you are doing perpetual inventory accounting, 
it will look like this every time. One journal entry for revenue, a second portion for expense, and that captures your entire transaction. All right, that's it for selling inventory in a perpetual system. Hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.